Oh, you... I say good morning to each other. I have uh, good news. We have another uh, addition to our uh, congregation. Uh, baby's name is Mia Abigail Chang. Uh, do you have her? Yes. Um, Johnny Chang, Valencia is the father, and Cynthia Castillo is the mother. <laughs> Such a nice name, Mia. Now we have two Mias in this church, right? Uh, Mia is supposed to mean one. Uh, in Greek, Mia is one female. Uh, but now we have two one females. <laughs> God's blessing. So shall we all stand and sing from the day? So all stretch out your hand and bless the parents and bless the baby. Thank you so much for giving us this wonderful child. We bless her and we bless you. And also we bless the parents, Johnny and Cynthia. May your blessing be upon this wonderful family, that your spirit may dwell in the house, that they will have a life in abundance, but most of all, in your love, Lord. I pray for Mia, this wonderful child, that you Keep her always inside of you. Keep her healthy. Keep her wisdom. But most of all, let her be truly be loved by you from the beginning to the end. Thank you so much. It's such a blessing. Such a blessing. And we worship you and praise you for you are a good God. Thank you so much. Pray all these in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.
Love is an ocean, you can drown me. The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste the sea. I'm under grace, the place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm cool in the cold. What the? Oh. Where did you go? <laughs> you know, looking at all these young people going places, I think we grown-ups should go too. So we have decided to go to New Zealand without, peop without young people next year. Maybe not. <laughs> Well, let's greet each other, saying good morning. Good morning. Uh, I, 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 well, it's, it's a good thing. Did you guys have fun in, in high school camping too? Yeah? Was it, was it hot? Was it hot there too? Yeah? Yeah? Breezy? Oh. Well, I think our church really is, is very, very unique, very unique church. And, and, and younger generation and middle age and older generation, we all are very evenly dispersed. So I'm very happy. I'm very happy. So maybe, maybe we should go, really, uh, the whole church should go uh, a vision trip sometime next year uh, to a faraway places. Like, how about like Fiji? Well, Fiji, Hawaii, Fiji, you know. Oh, New, New Zealand. I don't know, you, you guys been to New Zealand. Anybody been to New Zealand? New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand, there's a, 
there's a, a place called Milford Sound, and that's where they, uh, they filmed the movie The uh, Lord of the Rings, yeah? It's a really beautiful place. I mean, it's a really exotic place. I want to take all the church members to uh, uh, New Zealand one day, huh? In 2019, yeah? Would you like to go to New Zealand? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Anyways, uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, such a good day, such a good day. Such a, such a good, good church, good day, and good people. I'm, I'm really happy. I'm really happy. These days, I feel like I'm, I'm on a, a perpetual vacation, really. I, I feel like I'm in a good place. So turn to each other, say one more time, say good morning. Good morning. And say, you are nice. You are very nice. You are very nice. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. No. Um, you know, we've been talking about, uh, talking about God for the last several months now, and we talk about God is love, and, you know, love is an affair of will, and love is usually uh, doesn't mean the feeling, you know, feeling is just a hormone. Uh, you know, love is a, as an affair of will, that, and that it is, um, it is like, a, like a promise, you know, I will love you, I will take care of you, I will be with you, you know. Uh, I think that's a, that's a kind of love that God always speaks about. It's not the feeling that you get, you know, meeting somebody. I mean, I guess that is okay too, but the more important, the more, um, more meaningful uh, uh, a love is that, that we make each other uh, very valuable, very, um, you know, um, we, we wish other people of a good thing. You know, may good things happen in your life. I think that's the, that's the kind of love. And in order to have love, uh, I said uh, we have to have hope, right? Hope of uh, uh, eternity alone is probably worth the while of, of Christianity. You know, we, when, when and if we die, we have a hope of going to heaven. Amen? Turn to each other and ask this question. Are you sure you're going to heaven? Hmm? Um, You know, uh, when when I was in uh, uh, when I was in in, in, in Cerritos, you know, uh, uh, during my practice, I saw I saw this this Korean man. Um, evidently, he came to America when he was early 30s, and you know, he, uh, 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 the person who happened to pick him up uh, from the airport was a was a, um, a liquor store owner. And you know what happens. And eventually, about six months later, uh, he became an owner of a small liquor store somewhere, uh, I forget, uh, somewhere in Cerritos, I think. Anyways, uh, he worked night and day, Monday through Monday, you know, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday. I mean, no holidays whatsoever, you know. There's no New Year's Day, no Christmas, no Thanksgiving. I... I... I heard from him that you know liquor store opens at six in the morning, so he goes work early in the morning until you know liquor store closes at at eleven or twelve. So he comes home, sleep, and then go to work. Comes home, sleep. He couldn't you know he couldn't afford a helper, so he worked there all his life. He told me there's only one place he'd ever been out of the you know Los Angeles County. You know where it was? Las Vegas. He'd been Las Vegas one time in his life our whole life until he reached 70 years of age. So almost 40 years he worked in this little dinky um, liquor store. And then at the age of 70, he retired. And guess what happened to him? He promptly died in about six months. I mean, he was okay guy when I saw him when, when he re retired, but within six months, he just shriveled up and died. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, you know, if, if life is like that, Oh, you know, life is utterly meaningless, you know, for a person to work like that and, and promptly die, you know, that's, that's no good, that's no good. And for you and I, not only have a hope of eternity, the hope of this life while we're living will become better and much richer uh, in quality and in all aspects of. And I think that's the, that's the hope of Christianity. Amen? Uh, I think that hope has to be there for us to have love, truly the love that God talks about.
the hope of eternity, and then hope of betterment in our lives while we are living. Without that, without the, you know, without the hope of betterment in this life also, like all these young people were, were singing about, um, you know, the best time to die without the hope of betterment on this life would be, I don't know, at the end of the uh, weekend retreat of Grace Encounter. You know, uh, I mean, only hope that Christianity gives us, if the only hope that Christianity gives us is the hope of eternity, which by in, a, in and of itself is good enough, but if that is only hope, then the best time to die is probably the end of uh, weekend retreat on Greece, Grace Encounter. Everybody's filled with the Holy Spirit and then just all commit suicide. Best time. You know, you go to heaven, you know. I don't know, I have to commit suicide. But anyways, uh, that would be silly to think about. I mean, that's, that's really silly and it would be really no good. You know, not good enough. But God is good that He not only gives us the hope of eternity, but also no matter what the situation is right this moment, that it will become better. Amen? And I'm truly, you know, I, I think I am the living example, really. If I really didn't heed the voice of God calling me to come to Los Angeles in, in 1990, I mean, my life would really utterly be uh, miserable. I mean, the misery, if you look up on the a misery in the dictionary or Google, my face would plop up, you know? <laughs> misery. I mean, but since I, I heard the voice of God, you know, I came to Los Angeles and, you know, attend the church and, and eventually my children, I mean, for me, you know, uh, Judy and Ben are the best kind of example of son-in-law and daughter-in-law. I mean, it's the best kind of people. I mean, uh, is Judy here? Yes. And Ben? Yes, yeah. They're the best kind of son-in-laws and, and daughter-in-laws. But imagine if I stayed in, in Texas, we probably don't have them. You know, we probably have somebody else. And go, oh, God is good. I know, you know, on the, on the way, there were times that, that seemed so dark and so, you know, you know uh, so miserable. But after all, you know, I, I was just walking around and it was just such a good life, such a good life. And then, most of all, I got to meet all of you. You're such a good people, really. You are very obedient most of the time. <laughs> And you're, you're very nice. I mean, our church is really peaceful, you know. Uh, nobody screams and nobody, you know, um, crazy. It's such a good church. So I want to really thank all of you. But most of all, I want to thank God. He, he's such a good God. He gives us a hope. Amen? But in order to have that kind of hope, we also must have faith. Amen? Because, because hope is for the future. For the future, right? In order to have a, a future that you trust the future would be better, then you must have faith. You have to, you, you know, you have to trust something in order to have this, this hope of the future. Amen? And not only we believe and we have faith in God, but also we trust each other and we, you know, fellowship each other. And I think that's the, that's the Christian life that God would want us to have. Amen? So turn to each other and say, I will love you. It's not I love you, but I will love you. Okay? No matter what happens, I will love you. So one more time, turn to each other and say, I will love you. Hmm? And I told you the, you know, the trust changes and fluctuates and you know, all that. But I think the best part is that we are getting better. You know, we're getting better. We have better faith, you know, bigger faith. You know, our faith improves. Our relationship improves. I get closer to God. I think that's the, that's the best kind of life. Amen? So in order to have the increasing faith, I said last week, we have to have three things, right? Anybody remembers three things? Okay. Say, it, Tom. Three things. I have to be a right message. Good message, yes. Coach, coach, coach. yeah, coach. Okay, coach. Uh, he cut in line, but it's okay. 
Uh, and then, yes, the teachable heart that I could be wrong, that I am ready to learn, you know. I mean, the worst kind of person is I am always right. You know, I have no intention to change. I think that would be the worst kind of person. But a person who is teachable, you know, by the coach, by the good words, is that I'm ready. And the best time to learn is that when you realize, oh my goodness, I done something wrong. Or, oh my goodness, I did not know that I was making a mistake. I think that's the best time of teachability. In fact, in fact, that's the only time a person can learn and become better. That when you realize, oh my goodness, I've done wrong. And you know, uh, I don't know if I could say, well, you know, we are doing the uh, marriage seminar and, and yesterday somebody uh, said something interesting that this, this lady, you know, after having a, a one session of marriage seminar and promptly went home and she told her husband, honey, I've done I've done wrong. I'm so sorry. Kneeling down. And I go, oh my goodness. Now that's a good, teachable person. Praise God. Praise God. And wouldn't that be nice if we all become like that? Amen? And that's the kind of faith. And then in Christianity, you know, what do we trust? What do we believe? Well, we believe in Jesus. We believe in Jesus. Jesus the Christ. And I want to talk to you about who Jesus is, okay? You know, why do we have to believe Him? You know, wh what did He do? Who is He? You know, if, we, if we know Him correctly, okay, then we will trust Him, okay? So let's look at John chapter 20, verse 31. Only one verse, okay? One verse. John chapter 20, verse 31. Okay, let's look at it together. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. 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 Let's read it one more time. Okay? All together. Ready? One, two, three. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Amen. So, it says, but these are written. What is written? Don't say these. Okay? <laughs> what is these? These are written. What is written? Bible. Okay? Bible. The whole Bible. Did you know Christianity came from Bible? If you really think about it, um, you know, the whole Christianity came from Bible. Because... We don't, have, uh, we don't have a video of Jesus. Wouldn't that be nice if we have a video of Jesus? I mean, oh my goodness, you know, he's, he's, he's in Gethsemane and praying and somebody videotaped it. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, if we develop a time machine, we'd go there and videotape him. Uh, but see, we don't have a video. We don't, have a even, we don't even have a voice file. We don't even have a, a written uh, his own journal, you know, Je his Jesus journal. It, all the stuff that we, we know came from Bible. I know there is a very small, uh, very small, but important uh, information outside of the Bible. It says that Jesus, a person called Jesus, lived in Palestine, and he did something wrong, and then he was killed in crucifixion. That's the, that's the official uh, report outside of the Bible. Okay? But if you really think about it, the Christianity came from the Bible itself. The Bible teaches us you know, who Jesus is, how he lived, you know, how, where he was born, what did he do, how he died. All that comes from the Bible. So uh, John is saying, uh, these are written that you may believe. So the Bible is written so that you and I may believe. What do we believe? That Jesus is the Christ. Okay, Jesus is the Christ. So, what does Christ mean? What is Christ? Okay, somebody said Jesus Christ. What is the last name of Jesus? He said Christ. No. Okay, Jesus doesn't have last name. Jesus Christ. Okay, when we say Jesus Christ, it means his, his position. Jesus the Christ. 
Okay, so like Jesus the teacher, Jesus the prophet, Jesus the king, Jesus God, Jesus the Christ. So what does it mean to say Christ? Christ means? Savior. Christ means a savior. Okay? Uh, when you call somebody that you are my savior, it means that without you, I was to be? I was to be? See, without the savior, I was to be? Perished, right? Because if I was doing, if I was doing very well and you take me some, somewhere that I did not want to go, then you become a kidnapper. Okay? You, you are not a savior. If I was doing well and you know, I was happy where I was, and then you take me somewhere else, and then you become a kidnapper. But if I was somewhere that I was being destroyed, I was being dis, you know, uh, uh, toward derision, okay? and then you pluck me out from there so that you saved me. In other words, without Jesus Christ, all of us were headed to hell. Okay? All of us including me, you, you know, we are all born as a child of Satan, children of Satan. We are all hell-bound people. You know, we were, we were destined to derision. But God saved us because He is our Savior through Jesus Christ. Amen. So turn to each other and ask this. Do you believe Jesus Christ? Okay? And then... I want you to do this, okay? Whenever you are in the work or you're doing something and all of a sudden some unbeliever say, oh, Jesus Christ. And then all of a sudden, you know, you do, my Lord. Okay? <laughs> or if worse, you kneel down, take a knee and say, my Lord. Okay? And they'll be utterly shocked. I mean, <laughs> I don't do that. But, you know, I play racquetball and, and a lot of people, you know, they, when they make a mistake, you know, they say, oh, Jesus Christ. And then, thinking, you know, you're calling my Lord. Okay? I'm going to show you how he plays. <laughs> um, we don't use the, uh, 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 the name Jesus Christ in a, in a bad manner. But we, when we hear, when I hear Jesus the Christ, I think of him as a Savior who took me out of this misery. Amen? So now I have a better life because of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the Christ the Son of God. Now, uh, when people say Jesus is the Son of God, a uh, frequent silly question that people ask me, or usually a, a very um, sarcastic non-believer would ask me, so Jesus is the Son of God, and God is the Father. Um, who's, the, who's the mother? You know? um, and many people ask me, who's the mother? Is Eve the mother? I say, no, you idiot. It's not... Um, so, so uh, lots of times people have uh, people who had a bad past, especially with uh, his or her father, having a very difficult time believing in, in God because every time they come to church, we call God the Father. So imagine a person gr growing up. You know, we just saw a little glimpse in the in the video, but you know, he was beaten brutally by his father. And then eventually abandoned, and his father is, is really a, a bad person. Okay? And so he grew up hating his father, and he's just, just grinding and gnashing his, his, his teeth every time he thinks of his, his father. And then somehow he came to church, and we all call God, God, Father. And, and all of a sudden he thinks, you mean God the Creator is my father? So he's going to brutally abuse me? And he's going to eventually abandon me? And he's going to eventually do all these kind of bad things to me? I don't want him. Okay? I heard that many times. Okay? So I want to explain to you why we call Jesus the Son of God. Okay? The reason why we call Jesus the Son of God is not because he has the mother, he has the father, you know, and he's the product. The reason why we think like that is because of our faulty logic system. Because we, we have this tendency to see something and then take that information and solve another problem using that information. It's called projection. Okay? It's called projection. So it's like this. When, when, uh, when you love your wife so much, then every friend that, that, um, that your wife brings is a good people. I love this uh, church so much. All of you look so beautiful. 
Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> That's called projection. You know, you fall in love with something, and then everything that is re related to looks beautiful. Okay, that's called projection. You take some idea or some information from one aspect and then project into some other instance. Have you ever uh, had this kind of experience? Like you, you had this, this bad manager in your job. You know, he's just a mean person. And then all of a sudden, you hate this job. You know, if you think about it, the job has nothing to do with the manager. It's a manager who's the bad. But all of a sudden, you feel like this whole job is just worthless. That's because we have tendency to project. That's why when you come to church, when a person who's been abused comes to church, he has this idea of abusive father. And then when we hear God the Father, and then we all of a sudden project upward and say, oh, God the Creator, the Father, is a bad person because I have a bad father. Okay, that's a projection. Okay? Well, that's a wrong kind of way of looking at the situation. The right kind of way is that the father that we have biologically is, is sometimes bad because he also himself is a sinful person. Right? So he makes mistakes and he's very selfish and he, he makes mistakes. Right? Well, God the father that we have is a perfect one. So he gives us this example of fatherhood, okay? This fatherhood, never, never abusive, never making mistakes. So he's saying, I am the father, the example of father. And then I'm going to give you the example of son, this perfect son, father and son relationship. What is it? It's not about the sex. It's about the position, the father's authority, Father's name. In fact, the whole being of Father is represented in the Son. Amen? Nothing about the you know, relationship male and female. It is the position. The Father's authority, the Father's name, the Father's love is completely, utterly, 100% transferred into the Son. Wouldn't that be nice if we can do that? I mean, Son understands the Father perfectly. And in fact, he obeys to the Father perfectly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the Father loves the Son perfectly. That's the way that God gave us, intended, that we take this information from God the Son and God the Son's relationship and project it into our personal relationship, that we love our children, that we love our parents. This relation is supposed to be flowing down. But unfortunately... Because of this sinfulness of the world, we project upward. And then it becomes all uh, very confusing. So we say, who's the mother? Say, nothing about the mother, father. You know, that's a sinful, you know, people's sinful, you know, uh, uh, cognitive way of saying that father has to have mother and they sleep together and have a child. It's, you know, it has nothing to do with that. It's the, it's the relationship, it's the position. And that's why we say Jesus is the Son of God. Okay? So you say, because He's the Son of God, a perfect example, a perfect representation. In fact, one step further, He is the Father. He is Jesus. He is God Himself. Okay? That's, the, that's the order, that's the maximum, that's the perfect way of transferring father to son. Amen? And that's why we call uh, Jesus the son of God. In fact, is Jesus God? Okay? That's, that's a main problem that so many unbelievers have. You know? Because, because you know, lots of times... I mean, he's a person, not God. You know, I will take him as a person, but not God. Well, let me tell you this. You know, there are many religions, many religions in this world. Not a caca mini ones, okay? Not a funky, you know, I'm the, you know, not that kind of, a major religion like Buddhism, you know, Islam, you know, Christianity. You know, there are a lot of uh, good, you know, religions in this world. In fact, there are four big ones. And every single one was, was began by a person, okay? So a person initiated the beginning of religion. So like, you know, uh, Buddhism. Who's the, who's the one who started the Buddhism? Buddha. Huh? Buddha, okay, Buddha. 
Okay, Buddha was a person. Okay, Buddha was a person. He is not a bad person. He's not a liar. You know, he's not a he's not a cheater. So he himself knew that he was not God. But he ha- he had a good nature. You know, he wanted to say to the people a good things. So he wrote down and he began the Buddhism. Buddha had never once said that I am God. Okay, you. Become like me, a God, you know. He never said that because he knew very well himself is not God, okay. There's only one religion, Christianity, one religion, Christianity, that the person who began the Christianity or began the religion said, I am the God, okay. Jesus said, Son of God, you know, I am God. Father and me, the same. So basically, I am God, okay. So there's only two possibilities, whether he is really God himself, or he is a, he's a liar. A lot of people, in fact, I used to say, oh, Jesus is a good teacher. Good teacher? No, 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 no. Good teacher? No, no good teacher. Jesus is not a good teacher. Okay? Jesus is either, either God or a, a liar. Amen? I know Jesus said a lot of good things, but if you say a lot of good things and do bad things, you know, you become a bad person. Imagine if I, you know, I'm a pastor and, you know, I say all good things. And then, you know, once in a while, I rape a person. Imagine that. What do I become? A rapist. You know, I should go to jail. You don't say, oh, he's a good teacher. Once in a while, he makes mistakes. He doesn't, you don't say that. In other words, if Jesus himself fully knowing, imagine, fully knowing that he's not God, if he's not God, and saying that I am God, then that makes him a, a liar, a cheater, okay? No, no teacher or no those many things, okay? Or there's another possibility is that he himself is really telling the truth. And if he's telling the truth, he all of a sudden becomes our, our God, the creator. Amen? Now that's very important. You know, not, not many times we, we think very carefully what he said and what he did. Because we, we kind of vaguely say, oh, he's a good person. No, he ain't no good person. Okay? Either he's a god or he's a liar. Okay? We have to make sure that we take away the liar and the good teacher kind of thing. And then we say he's our God, the creator. Amen? Do you believe in Jesus as God? Say yes or no. Okay, now, why is it so important that Jesus has to be God for us to believe him and trust him? Okay, why does he have to be? Why can't he just be a person and say all these things? Well, there is a small reason. There is a, in fact, there is a big reason why he has to be a God. Okay, because if you begin a religion, if you begin a, a philosophy or some other morality or whatever, and you are a person, then what you think of is whatever is good to you, a person, right? You know, if, if I'm a Buddha and if, you know, I, I say all these good things, that's, that's good things came out of me, which is okay, which is good. But I'm not really interested in that. I mean, I'm interested, but I don't want to hang my life on that, okay? I am interested, fully interested in what the God who created me would like to tell me. That's what I'm interested in, okay? I'm sure there are a lot of good people, there are a lot of smart people, there are a lot of, you know, whatever people who tell tells all kinds of good things. So that's good. I will read about it. But I don't want to hang my life and, and put my life and trust my life on it. I will just learn about it, but I, I can't trust wholly because that's a person's idea. I want to know what God who created me tells about me or the life. Amen? There's only one way that could happen. See, I do not have ability or we do not have ability as a creature to know God fully. Why? Because I'm a, I'm a created being. I mean, I always tell this in the encounter, you know. You all have a mother, right? We all have a mother. Amen? As if you don't have a mother. You all have a mother, right? Okay. How do you know that's your mother? How do you know that's your mother? I mean, 
People tell you, you know, you look alike, but there are a lot of people look alike you. <laughs> in fact, in fact, we don't know who our mother is, 100% for sure. I mean, we, we kind of, you know, I mean, that's this mother, I have mother, my mother in La Habra, but I mean, but we don't look like, you know, I mean, I sure don't look like her, in my opinion. How do I know? Well, there is nobody, you know, being born, say, oh, hi, that's my mother. There's nobody like that. Okay? In fact, as a created being, we have no ability to know our creator 100%. Even DNA testing. Okay? Oh, so, oh I can do the DNA testing. Forget it. DNA, DNA testing will give you a probability, not the fact. So we will never know. Oh. So if you are sitting by your mother is asking, are you a real my mother? <laughs> However, there's one way to know. Because if you are sitting with your, with, next to your mother and, and you say, are you my mother? And you get slapped, you know. Like, <laughs> what kind of stupid thing is that? Why? Because she is 100% sure. Why? Because I know you are my mother. I, I saw it, you know. In other words, only the creator can tell whatever about the created beings. Even God, you know. God, God, can, God has to come in. That excludes the whole set of religions, you know. All, all the religion other than Christianity is made by people, I understand. They are good people, but not by God himself. Christianity is the only religion that God himself came down and spoke to us about who we are, how we should live. Amen? That's Christianity, and that's really important. And then he says, love one another, believe in God. And that's what it says. The Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen? So, why is it so difficult to believe in Jesus? Well, the reason is because in our heart, we have this perpetual doubt. You know, we don't have, we don't have a good teachable heart. None of us does. Unless and until we really realize, oh my goodness, I made a mistake. Fortunately, all of us realize that before we die. Okay, before we die. That's good. But if you realize that after you die, then you're too late. Too late. Let me give you an example. You know, uh, this is August, right? Today is August. August, what's the day today? August 12. August 12. You know, in August... Um, August means a lot to older people, you know, people who are about, you know, 60 or 70 years of age. Because many young people doesn't remember, but World War II ended in August. Do you know that? World War II ended in August. Anybody know which day in August World War II ended? Nobody. Are you serious? World War II ended in August 15. Oh my, yeah, we are living in America, aren't we? Huh? August 15 is famous people in, in Korea uh, and in, in China. Uh, in, South, in, in fact, the whole uh, South A A East Asia. Why? Because that's the day that Emperor of Japan signed the I almost say contract. <laughs> Signed the uh, unconditional surrender. Unconditional surrender on a ship. Okay, I know. 1945. 1945. August, August 15. I want to ask you, why did he sign it? Why did he sign it? Anybody know? Why, why did the emperor of Japan sign the unconditional surrender? That's a dishonor to Japan in, in, in their culture. But he had to sign it. Why? Any? Come on. Huh? Bombing. Bombing. Okay. Which bombing? Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I mean, that's a sad moment of human history. Okay. In August 6, atomic bomb was dropped in Hiroshima. So they just had a 73rd uh, 
I don't know, should we call that anniversary? Is it anniversary? So bad things are anniversary too. A memorial, okay, memorial. 73rd memorial uh, for Hiroshima bombing of atomic bomb. Did you know 80,000 people instantaneously vaporized? Imagine 80,000. That, that's, a, that's a whole bunch of people. 80,000 instantaneously vaporized. And, and then about 200,000 people eventually died. And then guess what? Three days later, on August 9th, another bomb was dropped in Nagasaki. Nagasaki, same number, a similar number of people instantaneously vaporized. You should see some of the documentaries. I mean, it's so scary. It's so scary. And then, guess what? More than a million people since then had, had been killed because of the radiation effect. Over a million people. For one, I mean, for two, just small bomb. For me, you know, I, I'm, I'm into history a lot, and I always had this, this, this unanswered question in my heart about, you know, Japan and America. It's because, did you know over, you know, all these people, you know, over 95% of the people who've been killed by the atomic bomb were civilians? not a military personnel. And in fact, you know, there were about 10,000 Koreans died also you know, on, because they were annexed by, by Japan. Anyways, I always thought, you, know, you mean more than 95% of the people who were killed by these two bombs were civilians, you know? Like, that's not, it sounds so no good, you know, it sounds so, uh, Ungentlemanlike, you know. But then I found out this. Did you know, before the bombing of these two cities, America dropped over six million pamphlets on those Nagasaki and Hiroshima city. You should see a picture of this, this American plane, this bomb, bomber planes going over the skies, and they're dropping, not bombs. I thought it was bombs, but it's like a snow coming down at uh, these pamphlets. And you, could, you should see that in, in uh, they have that, you know. And it is the warning. It is the warning. It's saying, within few, you know, citizens of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, you know, we want, you know, we America going to bomb you with atomic bomb in a few days. Get out. Get out. You know, it's called LeMay, uh, LeMay warning or LeMay pamphlet. Anyways, they're saying get out. And I saw that. I saw that. Guess how many people got out? Less than 10 people. People didn't believe it. There ain't no such a thing. There ain't, there ain't, there ain't no such a thing, you know. They are lying. People did that. And because of that, you know, within a few days, atomic bomb dropped and over... I mean, you should see that. I, 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 I've seen the, the, the museums, you know. In, I have not been to you know, Hiroshima, but I, there, is a, there is a museum. And there's a, I mean, there, it's, it's amazing. So, so many people got this joy. I mean, you can see the petrified person up against the wall. You know, it, it just hit you so hard. And then instantaneously, it left an imprint of a human on a cement wall. And they had a chance to get out. They had a warning, but they did not heed. Why? Because they did not believe it. At the end, this is what he said. The Son of God and that, the reason why God came down as Jesus Christ, and that by believing, you may have life in His name. Amen. If we believe, there are so many people saying, you know, believe in Jesus, believe in Jesus, believe in Jesus. So many people have been bombarded. But so many people refuse until the moment of death. You know, fortunately, all of us sitting in here have heeded, heard the voice, received the message, trusted the messenger, had a 
you know, a, a teachable heart, a, you know, penitent heart, say, Lord, I believe in you. And we all became a children of God. And we all have now eternity secured. And then we also have the hope of our own life also in this life. That's a wonderful news. Amen? Amen? But if we don't receive it, the moment we close our eyes, hell begins. And that's too late. And that's what happened to millions of people. Millions of people. I mean, you know, there's a story about Korean War. There's, you know, war in, in China, war in, you know, Africa. There is, there's so much warning. You know? I know, we don't have to heed to every single warning, but we have to really carefully study it Make sure, is it trustworthy? Is the messenger good? Is the message good? Do I, have, do I have enough evidence? And I'm telling you here, a man standing here received the message in 1990, accepted it, and lived ever since. I mean, I fell in love with God, you know, serving God, living in His name. And I do have eternity. You know, there has been times of ups and downs, but looking back, I really have a, I think I really have a good life. It's all because of Jesus Christ. Amen? I mean, I know, you know, my parents had faults. My life was marred with mistakes. But still, I look back and say, wow, that's a good life. Good life. Turn to each other. Say, believe in Jesus. Because He is Son of God. He is the Christ. By believing in Him, we have everlasting life. And I really want to say congratulations to all of you. And really thank, thank you. Imagine, you know, all of us sitting in here on a Sunday afternoon. We are all in peace and, and watching the video of children. I mean, young people singing and having a good time. And, you know, I know most of their backgrounds, not all of them, most of them, not all of it, but some of it. But like the, you know, like I said, it is. You know, many, uh, many of them come from a dark past. But they have a beautiful life. Why? Because we took the message and trusted it and believed in it and fell in love with God. And now we, we can love one another. So turn to each other one last time say, I will love you. Remember, because of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for, for choosing all of us. When we were born, we did not understand anything. And as we were growing up, we thought whatever I think was right. But now we understand that you are our God, you are the creator. And we made so much, so much mistakes. And we heard the message of Jesus Christ. And we believe in you. Such a wonderful news. Thank you so much, Lord. I want to bless every single person in this room. For you are such a good God giving us this, this full life. And on top of that, an etern eternity guaranteed to stay in heaven with you. Such a good news. Thank you so much, Lord. And we're about to give you our offering. May it, may it given unto you. May your name be glorified, Lord, wherever it goes. And Lord, I do pray that you would watch over us. This, Time is difficult. May your blessing be upon all of us, Lord, wherever we go, whatever we do. Thank you. I love you so much. Pray all these in the name of Jesus. Amen.